homesteaders, gardeners, and cooks. My name is Jennifer. Welcome to Miles Away Farm. Thanks for joining me in my kitchen. Today we are making a oatmeal toasting bread and this recipe comes from a blog that is now defunct called Farm Girl Fair. The woman who was behind it was named Susan and it was definitely the inspiration for my own blog and one of my favorite pieces of writing that was out there. And Susan for a while was a professional baker before she moved to Missouri to Homestead. And this is one of her recipes from when she was a professional baker. I have been baking bread probably since my early, early 20s. I started out doing it by hand, wasn't super successful. I'm not good at kneading bread for the length of time that it really needs to be kneaded by hand. And so it was okay, but it wasn't great and it was a ton of work. And then my parents gave me a bread machine and I used that bread machine for years, first as something to actually bake bread. And then I didn't love the shape of the loaf or the dent in the bottom where the stirrer had gone around. And so I finally started using the bread machine just as a dough machine and then putting the loaf of bread into a regular loaf pan and that way I could decide when I thought it was proofed enough and needed to go into the oven. And so I just used the bread machine as a dough machine for years. And then eventually the bread machine finally died. The bowl that everything went into started to leak. And about that time I inherited my father's KitchenAid mixer. This is an old KitchenAid mixer from the 80s. The newer ones are not made as heavy duty as this one is. And so it's definitely a workhorse. And then I just graduated to that and I started making my bread in a stand mixer. So if you can hand knead bread or you like to hand knead bread, more power to you. I'm not a huge woman and I don't have a lot of upper body strength and hand kneading bread has never been something that I was good at. So I'm going to make this recipe in a stand mixer. But this recipe is called oatmeal toasting bread and it is just absolutely fantastic and it is very good for exactly what the name implies, which it is excellent, excellent toasted. This recipe has been adapted from the original recipe, which I think probably made two loaves. And it's just my husband and I, and we can't go through two loaves of bread very quickly. And I also adapted it to, over the course of 30 years of bread baking and kind of making every variation possible, I finally started to recognize there was a basic pattern. And the pattern that I landed on was a pound of flour, and that could be a mix of whole wheat flour, white flour, and different grains that you might be adding in. So all of those combined in whatever combination you're combining them is 16 ounces or a pound. 10 ounces of water or milk. If you've done a deep dive into bread baking at all, they have what's called bread maker's ratio, and that is water as a percent of the total flour in the recipe. And so 10 ounces of water or milk to 16 ounces of flour um, works out to around a 65% hydration which is pretty standard for a, you know just a loaf of bread. If you're working with French uh, baguettes and things like that, or if you're doing pizza dough, they tend to be much more hydrated. Um, so more around 70 or 75% hydration. That makes a much softer, more sticky dough that's a lot harder to work with. And it's a very different animal. And that's definitely kind of a 201 rather than a 101 bread baking. So pound of flour, 10 ounces of liquid of some kind. Milk makes a more tender crumb. Water makes a more robust crumb. So it just depends on what you're looking for. If you want a soft sandwich bread, I would say try using milk instead of water. And then two tablespoons each of some kind of fat, and that could be butter, that could be oil, that could be lard, it could be whatever you wanna use. It could be olive oil, canola oil, again, sky's the limit. Butter is lovely and is often what I end up using, but it's two tablespoons of fat and then two tablespoons of some kind of sweetener. And the sweetener can be honey, it can be maple syrup, it could be regular white sugar, it could be brown sugar, it could be molasses. And then about one and a half teaspoons of regular table salt. So that could be Redmond's real salt, it could be sea salt, but a fine grain salt, not kosher. If you were gonna use kosher, you'd need to use a lot more. Salt is critical for flavor in bread. So don't skip on the salt and that's it. And so I've done a million variations. I've done breads with some cornmeal in it, breads with oatmeal in it, breads with nine grain cereal in it, but they all work out pretty well if you follow that basic ratio. And then you can keep notes and tweak from there. And so that's what I did with Susan's recipe. I adapted it to that one pound of flours rule that I've been using for years. And so that's what we're gonna do. And so we start out with three ounces of oatmeal, which is about three quarters of a cup of rolled oats. 
uh, three tablespoons of oat bran, and then I used five ounces of whole wheat flour, or you can do five ounces of you know all-purpose flour or bread flour. Bread flour just has higher protein, and so it's gonna have more structure. And then the balance of that in a whole wheat flour. So I have a grain mill, and so I sometimes grind my own wheat, but just a good whole wheat from the store works as well. The thing to know about whole wheat flour, if you're trying to incorporate more whole foods into your diet, is whole wheat has got bran in it, and bran is basically like sharp little knives. And so whole wheat flour is gonna cut the gluten strands in your bread to some extent. And so you're never gonna get the same kind of fluffy rise with a whole wheat flour that you're gonna get with a white flour. For years, I went on a crusade where I was only gonna eat whole grains, and so I used 100% whole wheat flour, and I baked that way for many, many years. And they were good loaves, but they were never super fluffy and then super lightweight. And then I finally decided that I was gonna add just a little bit of white flour to the loaf in order to try to balance that better and get a slightly higher rise. And so that, that's where I landed on that five ounces of white flour and then the balance other grains and whole wheat flour. Um, and you can flip that as well and do five ounces of whole wheat flour and then the rest white flour. If you're trying to incorporate some whole wheat into your diet, but you just aren't happy with the density and, and the lack of rise in a whole wheat loaf. There are some tips and tricks out there for getting a better rise on a 100% whole wheat loaf, and that's beyond the scope of this video and really beyond the scope of my own personal knowledge. I do know that people do it well, and the store-bought loaves, they're adding con dough conditioners and other things, and they're sifting out some of the bran in order to reduce the amount of those little scissors in there. So it can be done, but it's definitely a little more tricky, and I just resign myself to the fact that if I want a whole wheat loaf, it's gonna be a little bit more dense. But oatmeal toasting bread, definitely one of my favorite bread recipes of all the many, many myriad recipes that I've tried over the years. Uh, absolutely delicious. Let's get started. So if you're new to bread baking, Questions about yeast often come up and it can be quite confusing. One is called active dry yeast and that one is the one that you typically need to proof which is what I'm doing here where I'm just waking it up in a bowl full of warm water or in some cases milk. It needs to be 110 degrees or below or you will accidentally kill your yeast so proofing yeast can be a little bit tricky if you don't have a thermometer. And then the second one goes by a bunch of different names, rapid rise yeast, bread machine yeast, Yeast, quick rise yeast they are all instant yeast look for the word instant yeast on the package that's what designates the difference instant yeast has been processed differently so that it's much more fine and much more active quickly and you can mix that directly into your flowers and not need to proof it first although I often proof it anyway all of these yeasts are interchangeable they may just slow down or speed up your rise I generally use instant yeast for everything but sometimes I'm just at the mercy of what I can get at the store. If your liquid temperatures are over about 110 degrees, it will kill your yeast, it's too hot. You can work much cooler than that and it just takes a lot longer to rise, but if you get your water or your milk too hot, it will definitely kill your yeast. So it's worth having a thermometer. So to our liquid, I'm adding three quarters of a cup of rolled oats or three ounces and five ounces of white bread flour, three tablespoons of oat bran, and then the balance in order to make up to one pound uh, is gonna be my whole wheat flour that I've ground myself. And it is really worth having a scale, guys. I can't emphasize enough how much it will change your life. I really love just mixing my dough together with the end of a wooden spoon. You'll see people who will put this on the stand mixer with their dough hook, but it can take two or three minutes just to bring the dough together if you're doing this with your stand mixer hook. And it comes together in less than 30 seconds if you're doing it with a wooden spoon. And so I just use a wooden spoon. It's just something I've done for years and years. I've got a little bit of stuff here in the bottom that is still loose. And so I'm just rolling this around and kneading it briefly with my hand just to make sure that all of the grains are incorporated. 
And then what I'm going to do here is let this sit for 20 minutes without any salt in the mix. This is called an auto lice. And what this does is it activates the enzymes in the wheat, kind of wakes everything up, gets everything fully hydrated, makes for a much easier dough. But if you add your salt at the beginning, it tends to retard the, the yeast activity. And so a 20 minute auto lice, if you have time to just walk away and leave it sit, can really be helpful in terms of the quality of your breads. And then you add your salt in and then you start your kneading. Um, I'm going to knead this on my stand mixer on a low setting for, it ended up being about seven minutes. This is at the five minute mark and what I'm doing here, this is called a window pane test where you stretch your dough out into a window pane and you want to be able to see through it. You can see how it's tearing there and that is from the bran from the whole grains in there. And I tried it again, I kneaded it a couple of more minutes and it was still just about at the same point. So I figured that was about as good as it's gonna get. I am rolling this in my hands into a nice supple ball. And then I'm gonna put it back in my stand mixer bowl. No need to get another bowl dirty. And I'm just gonna cover that and let it rise for an hour. And I didn't grease anything here because I'm keeping things well covered. And so it doesn't tend to stick very much. Spraying down my loaf pan and turning this dough out punching it down, although it's not hugely risen, so there wasn't a whole lot to punch down. But I'm just gonna roll this flat and then roll it up into a tight cigar and tuck the ends in in order to make my bread loaf. There's a lot of different ways to shape bread loaves and you can get online and look at different examples. This is just a really simple, quick, easy way that I've been doing for years. It works for me. And then we're gonna put that in our loaf pan, cover this with a little bit of saran wrap so that it doesn't dry out. Um, you can use whatever you've got, just you want to keep it uh, covered. And then I'm just setting it on top of my wood stove to proof. And this is what it looks like after about another 45 minutes or so. And so it's ready to go in the oven. And you can overproof dough. So you can proof it too much and it'll kind of collapse on itself. This is a 350 degree oven and I'm going to have it in there for about 45 minutes. Oh, well, goodness, that's not good. So this is round two on this loaf of bread because I was baking the last one and my oven died literally in the middle of the bake. And so I went to pull it out when the timer went off and the oven was just kind of room temperature or lukewarm and the bread had risen and then fallen and it was just a huge mess. And so, I'm gonna redo it. And this is my upstairs little gas oven. And so we'll see how we do. I don't usually bake in this. So fingers crossed that the thermometer is relatively accurate. Let's see how this looks. Oh, beautiful. So that's been baking for 45 minutes. All that done. All right, it's the next morning. I'm gonna save the heel. My husband loves the heel, which is really convenient because it's not my favorite cut. And I'm gonna have a piece of oatmeal toasting bread toasted for breakfast. So here is what our loaf looks like. Maybe just slightly overrisen. I'm guessing there's a little bit of an air pocket in there as we cut through the center, but this gives you an idea of the crumb. And this one was five ounces of fresh ground whole wheat flour, three ounces of oatmeal, three tablespoons of oat bran, and then the difference was made up in white bread flour. So this one has a little bit higher ratio of white bread flour than the original recipe that I showed you in the video. Um, I flipped the two uh, when I made this loaf, hoping for a little bit better rise. But this is what it looks like. It's absolutely delicious toasted, and that's what I'm gonna have for breakfast.
Thanks for watching, Tribe. If you like this kind of content, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, leave me a comment and share. I have new content coming out every week.